Okay guys, as we described in another video, this vehicle has got a terrible brake squeal coming from the rear. We've got the DBA T2 rotors. Before that, it had a set of uh, RDA rotors that had the same squeal. So we've tried different rotors. Now, I didn't come down in the last shower. I've done a lot of brakes, brake pads, and worked as a brake specialist in a number of different businesses. Um, I like to avoid things like disc brake quiet and other dodgy products, usually with the right pads and rotors and everything and the materials being right, usually you can uh, not have these issues. So what we're gonna do is get it up, get the wheels off and I've got a bottle, I think. Let's have a look, I think I've got a bottle. I just wanna say, doesn't the white writing on the outside of these tires look terrible? Yeah, so I went into the old brake bits and pieces container. I found this old bottle of, I don't know how old it is. I gave it a bit of a wipe off. I've got the cloth here. Um, I don't think it's, doesn't look like it's dried up. Let's have a look. Never really, probably used it once or, like I said, if you, there you go, there it is. Look, looks just like it did last time I used it, I reckon 10 years ago. But anyway, there it is. Cap it when you're not reusing it. This stuff's nasty. If you read the label, it says cancer causing products and all that. Don't get it on you, so be careful. Let's get the wheels off, have a look at these pads, see if we can do some basic checks, see if we can find any other problems first. I don't think there will be any problems because, yeah, we've been over this pretty well. And as you can see, I'm consistent because the other vehicle I drive does it as well. Maybe because it's dry, I drive so smooth and I don't use the brakes enough and when I do, I use them very lightly. They've kind of like, you know, glazed over a bit. You know, the old glaze thing, it isn't really an excuse. Um, with the right materials, it shouldn't happen anyway. But let's have a look and see what we can find anyway. Eh? Well, let's get these wheels off. Oh, we'll just have a play around with uh, one side at a time, eh? so we can figure out looking at that. Put you right in the way. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. So first thing I'm going to do, the DIY way. Small flat blade screwdrivers. Yeah. Just how any other brake services glaze really no different, in my opinion. So just want to get here and just give it a lever, make sure that's all working, nothing there seized up, right? So that's gonna push the piston back in that easy because that's done, that's easy as that happens. And I'm just gonna get in and always got to check the basics right so we've just got the piston pushed back in already so the caliper should move back and forth like that right top and bottom nice and smooth no issues there okay grab a 17 mil bit awkward here because could you be in here? Can you just move out the way a little bit? Thanks. Good, thanks. Um, yeah, but you, you want to see what's going on though, don't you? I know, I know, it's such a problem. Um, right, so what we're going to do is 17 mil and get that undone. And the one. Now it is kind of important to sort of have the car kind of sort of clean if you can, you know, like not covered in mud too much and all that, you know, clean works better because it's not sensitive like a fuel system, but, or, you know, but brake components are quite sensitive, right, so we've got that loose now, I'm just choose to 
finish it off by hand so I can feel where it's at. Well, it doesn't take too long. Don't touch brakes unless you know what you're doing. Just because you watch this doesn't mean you know what you're doing, but it might, it might help you know what you're doing. All right, so all that looks good. No secrets or surprises there. Same on the bottom one, have a look here. Yeah, it's not like it's all rusty or anything like that. It's, you know, lubricated enough. Let's grab a light. you know surface rust inside the piston that's all right no dramas there just checking all boot and everything is the only moving part there guys in case you're unaware with brakes is that that's the piston in in there okay that mess around with things you don't know unless you understand what's going on with things here okay let's just get the pads out anyway because they're coming out now that disc brake quiet i do note that it says to not use it with shimmed brake pads and these are shimmed so <laughs> i don't know what you meant to do there but I'm going to use it anyway because as you can see there they are let me get the backing plate off right. you can see there genuine Toyota you can see this Toyota there you heard the squeal and if you don't know what I'm talking about it's in the other video right and you can see that metal rubbing there that could be our culprit right there right so what I'm gonna do I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So that's the inner pad. We're going to put everything back the same. Now I'm not going to... Look, the ways to fix brake noise is usually um, use a quality set of pads. We use Bendix for years. And yeah, some people can carry on. They don't like Bendix, whatever. But we didn't have a problem. They worked well. The only problem with the Bendix in these was they didn't last very well. Okay? So that was the problem. That's another discussion. Right, so if I put a set of Bendix pads in, it'll fix the problem. Why did we go to Genuine? We went to Genuine because we know from all the new Prados and all the original pads how long they last, but the Bendix just don't last as long, right? So that's out as well. So we've got both the pads out. Let's go over to the bench, right? Right, so you can just check, make sure those clips are there. You can clean those out if you like, but it's not gonna be that. Every other car is the same. You know, you can muck around, clean everything, you do whatever you want. <laughs> right, get all your dust out. <laughs> use water and wash brakes, don't use compressed air, guys. Um, you know, so you can clean that. No point lubricating because it's just going to stick to it. It's got to be clean. That's stainless steel. It's just got to be clean, like, you know, kind of like clean like that, you know. So you can, you can fluff around and do that if you like. I don't care. I'm not going to worry about that. I just wanted to get it apart. I know that everything's working normal here. Just check all the slides. They're the slides, right, for the caliper, caliper slides. It's a full floating caliper. Um, just make sure all your pads are sliding. You know, these can fall out, so be aware of that. I'm not going to pull it out, but, you know, they just clip in. Right? Make sure that's there, that's there. Make sure there's no rocks or anything in between. It's only when it's cold, and it's only when you're going really slowly. Now, there is another issue, even with Bendix pads, and it seems to be for a lot of people that have got these rotors, so I don't know if it's something to do with this, but when they're cold and in reverse, I know a lot of people get it. That one, I don't think there's a solution for that, but this is a bit of R&D, guys. Um, like I said, I don't like these products like Disc Break Quiet, right? I really, I'm not a fan, but it's a bit of R&D to see, right? So what I'm going to do, we'll go to the bench, we're going to give those backing plates a bit of a clean and apply some of that Band-Aid Fix stuff and see what happens. Okie dokes, so I wouldn't normally do this, this is mainly for the camera, you can see there's a beveled edge on the pad anyway, right, so the brand, Advix, you know, that's a pretty well known brand that Toyota uses, that's how you tell which is the inner and the outer, we're going to put them back the same way, so we're going to, not going to mix them up, we could go and wash them and press wash them and dry them and everything, but we sort of just want to do it a quick away for the video, so I'm just going to wipe that surface where some of this stuff might go, you can see the imprint from the caliper where this stuff might go, if you know what I mean. And then I'm going to take that backing plate off because there's two things I'm going to do. Right. I'm going to use some of it to kind of stick the backing plate right, to the pad. 
Oh, can you see what's going on there? See that rubbing around? That could be... I don't know. Look, I'm not sure, but... I'm not sure about anything when it comes to brake noises when it shouldn't be making brake noises. When you've got decent, genuine pads and rotors and everything, there shouldn't be any noise. Like, you know, they're just... But then brakes are brakes. It does happen. And, um... And that's that. So we're just going to try and sort it out using nothing else but this product that we had sitting there as soon as it's basically full. Because I think, I don't know why, how I ended up, why I brought it. Because I just don't like it. It makes me feel sick when we've got to, I like to fix things properly. You know what I mean? Like, you know, not sort of, you know, it's a band-aid. But, hey, John, I think you actually put it up. And I love some of your answers. And like, what was it the other day when I was talking about copper or brass or something and what is it? Yeah, um, brass, to make brasses, what is it? I was crapping on anyway about different materials and it takes the two to make the one. What is it? Zinc and zinc and brass makes copper, whatever anyway. And you can use different percentages and whatever. And, and you know, brass is an alloy, right? So, um, but look, obviously some people know more about that stuff than me. I'm just going to make sure that's all clean and dry. Right, so if we need to, we'll just get the compressed air and give it a quick, a quick blow. Right, trying to put it in a clean spot that's dry. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit whatever. You know what I mean? Sorry, getting it all mixed up now. That one goes there. You can tell by the seat. You can't really go wrong because you got your, if your backing plate originally stayed on the original pad, that's how we try and do it. So I'll just get some compressed air. Yeah, yeah. and just, just to dry the back of that, just to make sure it is dry. So it says not to, sorry, here we've got the compressor for a sec. waiting for the compressor so it says not to use with shim pads so a couple of things we can do here we can ditch the shims and glue up the pistons you know why I don't like this stuff I think because when I go and change brakes and I've changed a lot of brake pads um, people that have used this before and it's like gooey sticky rubbery stuff you know so with that in mind I'm going to use a minimal amount but if we're going to do it I still like the shims you know anti squeal anti rattle shims type of thing like, so I'm not going to get rid of them. So this is my plan, okay? Yeah, you guys, I'm sure there's people out there that have used this a lot more than me. But I'm going to go... I'm going to go... I'm going to go something in anyway if it comes out. I don't want too much to come out, so I'm going slowly. But there it is, right? I'm going to go... Right, I'm just going to put it kind of like where the piston sits. Because I believe that bada bing is where any problem's going to be at. We don't need no big messy situation. And on this one, you can see where the caliper sits. So we're going to kind of go not too much. What a mess! You know, you see what I mean. You start feeling sick like I do, do you? When you see this stuff, well, I'll be looking in the comments to see. So yeah, I, feel, I know what you mean about the feeling sick thing. Right, I'm sure there's some people. I'll put a little bit here as well. Just so that we've ticked our boxes, but I think I haven't used too much. I've done the best I can. I'm a beginner at this, right? First time, I look at all that messy stuff. I just want to get some paper towel and wipe off the excess. But then that wouldn't be any fun because then we wouldn't see all the red mess, would we? Now, it says to leave it 10 minutes and you can apply it when it's still tacky. So what I'm thinking is, we'll do this. like paint, right? I'm only going to put it where that caliper sits, right? Like that. Really thin. Doing it as thin as I can kind of thing, if you know what I mean. And if you 
let it dry, go and buy the 10 minute thing they say, even though we're not doing what they say because they said not to use it with shim pads. Don't know why, but I'm sure to me, uh, I can't see any reason that it would make any difference whatsoever. So it's pretty flat. We don't want lumps in that area. There's no point putting it anywhere else. I, when I've taken it off cars, people have used heaps and it's all lumpy everywhere and it's stuck in the piston and everything. So you get that, you get your rag. What? Oh, don't put in that, but right. Yep, nice and clean. And then there's a little... I can tell you, I guarantee this keeps for years because this is... Let's see if we can find a date. Years by date? Mm. No, nothing. I can tell you, it's very old. At least 10 years, guys, at least. Uh, probably could be closer to 15. Um, I'd probably say closer to 15 than 10. So we've got our inner pad here, our outer pad there. We're going to give this 10 minutes, right? While that 10 minutes is happening, I'm going to go and inspect everything a bit more, check the surface of the, uh, you know, bits and pieces over there. We'll give it the 10 minutes and we'll carefully slot this in and try not to get messy in doing so. Trademark, trademark bit of mud over here that shows the vehicle gets used. Just a little bit more water here when washing and uh, we won't have that. Now, you can clean this out if you like. I mean, there's no real need to it, but I'll tell you what, we'll grab a can of brake cleaner. And we'll make a bit of mess, all right? So, I'm just gonna turn him around so it's facing down and just to give it a clean out anyway, right? Seen as we're there. Right, and that's going straight all over the nice clean floor. Bloody fantastic. Gonna give these a clean as well. Ouch, just hit me head. Make sure all our shims are nice and clean. Right. Grab a rag, give those a bit of a polish up. Don't spray any of that stuff in these holes here. We want to keep those lubricated. Remember those guide pins. What I like to do is, I've got different things I like to do with those. I like to leave them alone. I, I believe to her to use the right grease in the right amount. If you put too much in, what can happen? They get a bit of suction going on and pop these caps off the end. So be aware of that, been there, done that. And I mean, you don't have to put much to do that. So you don't want to dry this up and you don't want to get dirt and debris, which is why I said it's important to start off with it clean, okay? can't see any reason why I mean this surface looks really good it's just like any other rotor hopefully this patch up bodgy stuff that's over there drying um, works out all right and what you can do is just get your caliper slides if you want and just go just make sure you're happy all right, so basically they go in the caliper is normally sitting there and this dust boot sort of sits this car's getting a bit old now it's a 120 so and if you, I can feel the suction, so if I push enough, this top one will probably go and shoot off at me. See how it wants to keep coming back out, right? But look, the main thing is that, you know, they're not, they're not seized or anything like that, right? So that's probably more like how it should be, but... Bit of a mix and match and see. Yeah, that one's a bit happier in there, whatever reason. Hmm. Look, you know. There's certainly no binding or anything going on. That's the main concern. And I never see that with these pads. These these rear calipers and stuff like that. You get it with other cars. And if I want to pick one from going back on memories, the old XFs, mate. Oh, my God. The first of the rear disc brake in the Falcons. 1980-whatever. What was that, 1987? Something like that. Absolute shockers. Anyway, that's another story. Um, 
I'm just considering whether I put a small amount of grease on those or not. I don't think so. Like I said, I'm happy with the way it is. Um, so we'll just leave it the way they are. That's working. Um, so let's take a break for five minutes. Well, you won't get to, but I'm going to take five minutes and then I'll bring those pads over and start slipping them in. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. While we're waiting, we've taken the other back wheel off and loosened off the wheel nuts on the fronts because while we're at it, we're going to do a rotate, rotate the tyres. Now, this stuff, it still seems fairly wet to me, you know. I'm not experienced at using it, that's for sure. Now, what I want to do is hopefully get these pads in without getting covered in red stuff. Messy. Very messy, I'm thinking. So it's going to make it look awkward, definitely, because I don't know what I'm doing. No, no. Because, well, I probably don't know what I'm doing, but... The main point, I think, really is that... I don't want to get covered in red stuff. So I'm being a bit unco. Did I get any? No, none, see? Bada bing. Bada boom. Okay. So the messy stuff's in at one side. I mean the red stuff. The CRC disc broke quiet. We'll just wipe that excess bit off there and there because it's certainly not going to necessarily be helping anything. All right. Now we'll get the other one. This one could be a little bit harder to get in position. It's going to get messy as soon as we go to slide the caliper on anyway, isn't it? Because, see what I mean? It's, that's got a slide over that. But anyway, that's why we push the piston back to give ourselves a bit more room. And hopefully... So yeah, plenty of meat still left on these. If this doesn't solve the problem, it'll be back to Bendix. I don't care how fast they wear out. And I just put my hand in it at the other side, you doofus. Just shows you how wet it is after 10 minutes. That's what that, that was about. You fool! What have you done? No, wiping it off the fingers now because remember what we said, cancer causing business. Not good. When left on skin for prolonged periods of time, you know, the US, California, whoever, cancer expert people reckon they've got it all figured out anyway. So. Pads are sitting back in place, so is the back and plate. One thing I'm going to do is get a can of red paint, paint these calipers red while we're at it. No, I'm just joking, but I reckon it'll look good. Silver car, black wheels, red calipers. Always looks good, doesn't it? I'm going to wipe that bit of red. I don't mind the evidence on the pads and that, but I don't want it all over the caliper. Right, so. Pretty simple caliper. We've checked everything. No dramas. Now we want to get this in position without making too much mess, so we just want to bring it in nice and square if we can. Just pull those boots out of the way a little bit so that it allows the caliper to come in and sit there. And what's really good, if you've got your bolts in your other hand, which I haven't, but they're close enough. Straight in. Get that one started. And of course it's not really. That one started. Now why does this bolt not want to start? Oh, it does now. I was going to say, that's a bit bizarre. It's something special just for a video. Again. Right, so. What we're going to do now that we've got that in place. See, too much grease, it just pop messes with seals and whatever. That's why I chose not to in the end. I haven't found one where I've... I'm not talking about the grease because I haven't found one yet that... Those just need to be F tight. I think it's something like 80 or 100 Newton meters, but I don't do it. All I don't break it ever. But what we're going to do now is to get all that to sort of stick where, where it wants to be. And I'm not sure if we're meant to do this or not. I'm not sure if it's meant to dry and then we put it in or whether you're meant to use it like glue. But I'm going to pump the brake pedal short stroke so it doesn't go beyond its normal travel. You can watch it there. I'm over here. And now it's gone hard, so I reckon you would have watched those brake pads go in. We've got our little set up there where we just open the door, put the stick in. So, bada bing, you want to see how messy that is? All right. So it's a little bit untidy. You know when you've used it. That's why I tried to just put it where the caliper was, not everywhere. Let's go over the other side and get that side done. How do you too. like that with a light on over there?
Okay, we've got our rag. We've got our technical, technical brake replacement tool handy. Right. Screw right. We're just in here. You can't do this on all brakes. These are particularly, like I said, we don't see problems with these. Another reason we like Toyotas, just, you know, good cars. Screwdriver goes in, there's a hole virtually through the side here, you know. Bang, on the outside of the pad where you're not going to damage anything, and just gently, that should just go in that easy. I'm not, I'm, you know, an eight year old could do that. All right, and then just gently there like that, just open up that gap a little bit. Gently in there, we're not going to go and leave it that way like that and scratch the rotor, we're going to go this way, just gently. It's not, we're not talking about a lot of pressure. Oh, you know, you're damaging the pad, no, no. Just gently like that, right? And if you want, you can go to the next size up screwdriver that's got a, a wider end on it to spread the load a little bit. And it's complete. This one's my blunt one, right? And it's going to put a little bit of pressure. The only pressure on the rotor is on the outside corner, so it's not going to do any damage, make any noise or whatever. And that, as simple as that, that piston's pushed in. If it doesn't go in that easy, you got problems, and you won't have problems. Cool. Toyota, right? So this is, I suppose, kind of a brake pad changing video, but I'm not telling you how to change brake pads. If you want to use it for that, that's up to you. As I keep saying, if you're not sure about what you're doing, take it to an expert. Who did that up? That'd be me. Certainly don't want it to come undone when we don't want it to. It's probably it's 80 or 100 newton meter type thing, you know. I don't use half inch tools for many things, mainly suspension, but also caliper bolts is something else. Depending what, these are a 17 mil, so I do use this tool for these. On some other cars, definitely, well, it's been a while, but you know, I remember doing brakes on, you know, on all the Holdens and Fords, all the common stuff. Uh, you're using a little throughout ratchet and a 15 mil socket and you had to use a 17 mil spanner to hold the nut there while you put the 15 out here and before that they were even unmetric I'll call it unmetric or instead of imperial I'll call it unmetric they were unmetric unmetric right and, you know like 9 sixteenths and that pretty annoying so again see what I mean about it's important to be sort of clean because you're pulling this out there's grease and if you've got all this covered in mud and dirt and it's going to fall straight onto your nice clean we we'll could undo these a little bit more maybe. There it is, right? You know, you want it to just come out clean like that, right? I'm just gonna sit those just there on the side steps, usually a good spot where it's nice and clean. Bada bing, you can just sit there for a sec. I'll put both of those down. Nothing wrong with any of those. I don't need to test it, wobble it around or nothing. Should be sweet. And carefully just sit that there out of the way. Same deal, the pads will just Pretty easily slip out like that. They are one of the easiest brake pads to change. But don't let that encourage you. If you've got no idea and you shouldn't be touching brakes, doesn't matter how much you don't trust people with your car, you need to find someone like, you know, the people we recommend usually. They can be a little bit, I'm gonna, this is gonna be good for the video. They can be a bit fiddly to get from, <laughs> here we go, now it's completely cocked up, but they, um. They can be a little bit fiddly to get out. They've got to come in and out evenly, right? Right. Can be a little bit fiddly. So if you find yourself there going, oh, I can't get it in or I can't get it out, hey, why did you make it look so easy? Well, you're right. So at that time, I made it look hard. Right. So there's a little bit of rubbing there on the end of the pad too. What you can also do is get your file and just give that a clean up because it can be a manufacturing issue where it's a little bit rough and dragging and things like that. Same deal with this. We'll go get the sticky stuff on, again, the clean up, the sticky stuff, while the sticky stuff's drying, we'll come back and give these a bit of a clean up, that a spray, like we did with the other one with the brake cleaner. We'll let the brake cleaner evaporate dry, if it's not dry, just get a bit of compressed air once it's clean. It's mainly here's dirt type dust, not brake dust, because this vehicle, as much as you wouldn't believe it with the mud sitting over there, this gets a regular sort of clean up after any mud, it doesn't necessarily get truck wash degreaser and pressure that's why you can see everything looks dirty some people would see photos of this on they go oh stay away from it you know a million miles no well you know if it's too clean it's probably someone's trying to hide something or they've been using pressure washers and chemicals too much and too close so it's good to do that but every now and then 
um, in this case under here. As long as it's not caked with mud and dirt and you've used enough water to rinse everything out, we're happy. So over to the bench we go. Okay, doke. So, in a pad, because you can see the piston. Don't be confused, because that one obviously was the other way last time. All right, and it wouldn't really matter, but because the pads are worn, I do prefer to put them back where they came from, right? So this is going to be the inner. This is going to be the outer, okay? Let's take those backing plates off. Because once we clean them, they're going to be harder to see. So, mental note, the inner is on my side. My side's on the left this time, right? Might find that interesting. Same sort of wear mark from the piston. Right. Right. These are awesome. Did I tell you about these cloths? Thanks, Mark. You got me onto these. And um, not that I'm recommending Costco, but 36 pack was 20 bucks. I think they've gone up to 25 last time I saw them, but I only ever ended up with half a pack. It cost me 10 bucks, and I'm still going. So, because I'll just keep, they wash up really well. They work really good for cleaning cars. They work really good for cleaning bloody you can rinse it out and use it as a chamois you can clean windows with it pretty well actually and uh, yeah they, they're really good I'm I'm impressed impressed I'm impressed so this vehicle we're not going to road test it for a while once I get all this job done we will give it some time I'll do a bit of personal testing personal time so that when we do the official you know, the official test, I've kind of got more of a conclusion for you rather than just going, I don't know, whatever, kind of maybe, whatever. Right, so, which side was which? Even though we could mix them up and whatever, it wouldn't matter if we swapped them around because they've been swapped before. Right. Wouldn't really matter because you can see the wear on the piston here. Oh, bada bing. Now what happens with the pads, obviously, they do move a little bit back and forward like that in the caliper. It's not a super tight fit. So a lot of that could be that, or some of that could be some of the squealing. Okay, so this could work. Let's grab that compressed air again. Just make sure it's dry. See how it dried everything up? Beautiful, isn't it? Here's a little tip for anybody that's watching this. Top tools for your workshop. Besides all your basic tools, compressed air, guys. Compressed air and air blower. Um, you probably don't need a massive compressor or tank because a lot of your battery tools these days, they're all battery, you know? Like, you know, you don't use the uh, pneumatic type stuff, you know? We've got a few things there, but we rarely use it. Now let's see if we can get better at this this time. Should give it a shake, eh? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it makes any difference. Okay, so over here again, making mess where the piston's gonna go. Alright. <sighs> a bit there as well, because we can. No point, is there? So I don't know if we should let this sit for 10 minutes and then chuck the shims on as well. Since we're breaking the rules of what you're meant to do. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, so maybe we could have ditched the shims. I think I like the idea of keeping the shims. And, so we're done with that. Right, there'd be enough in there to last a lifetime anyway. We could do, we could have a 4x4 diesel Prado Tech Day and get, it's still like rubber, see, it rubs off because it was a bit dried on the bench there. It just rubs off like, it's, um, yeah, I'll read it to you what it is. This brake quite stops, brakes, squeals and squeaks. Well, if it doesn't, is it a money back guarantee? We'll see. Okay, disc brake quite, this will be a review in the end. Um, 
formulated to dampen the vibrations, yeah, blah, 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 directions, read entire label, yep, sure. And apply liberally, that's why they do it, to the steel back of each pad, liberal. Well, there's no point going liberal because it's going to squash out anyway, right? So it's like anything, mate. You know, you can throw as much grease as it's, most of it's going to get pushed out when that makes contact. The, the piston, when it makes, that's the only part that makes contact. That's the only part that matters. You can put it liberally. It's just going to out everywhere anyway, right? So that's, I oh, disagree. All right, they're the experts. What would I know? But that makes sense to you, doesn't it? That Why would you put it liberally? And it says, uh, back of each pad, spread evenly over entire surface. So they probably want you to paint the thing red because then you use more of this stuff. I don't know how much it is. Like I said, 10, 15 years. Um, what does it say? Hard to read. Should be applied to... Should not be applied to brake lining, of course, guys. Yeah. So don't put it on that side. That's not where you want to put it. If this doesn't work, what we'll do... We'll, um, there's other things we can do. You can resurface the pads and rotors. It'll stop it, but only temporarily, right? Until things re-glaze over again. So you need a solution that when the brakes are glazed, they don't squeal because brakes are going to be glazed. So you can deglaze them, give you 500 to 1,000 Ks, and then bang, they're squealing again. What was the point of that? What, are you going to go into a workshop, jack it up every 1,000 Ks to deglaze the disc? Not happening. Okay, it says, allow for 10 minutes. May install while still tacky. Replace cap after using. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they know really either. I don't think anybody knows. We're in trouble, I think. Okay. We're going to put... Clip that back in place like that. See what I mean? You can put it liberally as you like. It squeezes out to a place that it's not going to do anything anyway. So, hope you get me with that. We just re-engineer things and do stuff the way they work, hopefully. But it is a product that may provide some assistance. Now, just to be different with this one. I've got a rag here that's sacrificial quality let's wipe the excess off this one why get messy if we don't need to right yeah some people are liking that so you can do it like that is that better it's making some people feel better glad you did that don't know how you did it on the other one and the ocd didn't kick in i know i know Totally understand. Let's get all this side cleaned up best we can. All right, so that's there's something underneath there to helpfully absorb the vibration, and it certainly dries like rubber. Okay, that is what happens. Now, let's get the lid off this thing again and paint the town red. You've got to go slowly because once it starts coming out, it comes out. Hope you're with me. I'm only not going to apply liberally because it's going to squeeze out from where we want it, and I'm only going to put it where we want it, right? Because that's how we roll. Now, this one, this was the one that goes on the caliper, so it goes most of your contact on your caliper is around there. I think now it's that 10 minute thing, right? Right, I reckon I've done a pretty good job. Give me a round of applause. Okay, I'll give myself a pat on the back. No, I won't, can't reach. All right, at least I've got someone to talk to while I do this job. <laughs> right, okay, there it is. There's the stuff. Not promoting it, I paid for it. It's 10 to 15 years old. Not really into, um, you know, if it was, if this is an awesome product, then we'll be going, yeah, this is great. So it'll be interesting to see what other people's experiences are. Let's give it a break. Um, another five or ten minutes or whatever it is, probably ten, to let that, I don't know, give it ten minutes, it says. What does it say? It says, allow to set for ten minutes, but it doesn't set in ten minutes. So anyway, we'll just allow it to set for ten minutes, all right? Back soon. All right, so back over here again. Give those seating areas of the for the pad a bit of a clean up. Make sure they're nice. And of course, while we're at it, we'll just give that caliper a bit of a wash out. Oops, it's all right. 
Those calipers not real heavy, so they can hang by the brake line, no problem. It's a good test. <laughs> grabbing the mop to do some cleaning up while that dries. Yeah, just a bit of a clean up, clean as you go situation. And yep, I've got the squeaky shoes on today, that's right. So the problem is, right, if you don't clean up as you go, I'm going to end up standing and walking it everywhere and walking into your car. That's how we roll. This is the Prado Hospital, not the butcher shop of messy grots. It's easy to clean as you go. Already done, guys. I've just mopped under both where the wheels were. Bada bing. The other thing you can do, press air nearby, you can just go. Speed up the drying process if that's what you need to do. So in that whole minute or two, I mopped all the mess off the floor and blew it dry. And that is beautiful and smooth, right? So no excuses there. You, you can see the slides. Let's check them again. Have a, You know, you can just see how simple, right, once you get it in the hole anyway. But look, there's no resist. It's just how it's meant to be, right? There's no issues there. Either one in either hole, whatever, you know. It's kind of like, do you want to keep them in the same? You can do that, or you can swap them because maybe one wears different to the other and it's time to sort of turn and rotate a little bit. I can't think of any pros and cons to either on those because generally you don't get bugger or wear or anything anyway. And that's that's just how they feel on all these cars. There's never an issue. Let's not worry about adding any grease to it. I think all we've got to do now is... Wait a few more minutes for the uh, special red stuff to dry, right? And it'll be butter bing, right? Um, I'll tell you something while we're at it, what I like about the slotted rotors, I'll tell you what I do and what I don't like, right? What I don't like is when you've got to machine them because the cutting tool, right? Right as it goes over the cut, the slot, Right, and it hits it again, it can put an indent on the other side if you're cutting two at the same time. So you kind of got to cut one side at a time, ideally. Well, you don't got to, because some people don't, but I'm telling you, what, what I've seen happen is where the cutting tool jumps over there, it pushes the rotor enough that you end up with a lump at this side, and then when you drive the car, it goes, because there's a line in the other side of the rotor. So that can be a pain to machine, not a big fan of machining anyway, we like them ground, and ground is from factory on the rotors we like. Um, what rotors do we like? I like the TRWs, I like the surface on them, and the fi I do like the TRW rotors, but what I don't like is all the stock for the Protos hasn't got the black paint here, we've got to have the black paint here, don't like rust. They go rusty, they just look terrible. So TRW, anybody want to fool this one to TRW and say, look, we like your rotors, we want the black paint. When I talk to the reps, they say, oh yeah, they've all got black paint now. But when I ring Repco, they've got silver. So, you know, thank you very much. Get us the black and let us know when they're black. Give us the right price. Not the cheapest, not the dearest, just fair and reasonable. Send me a few sets. I'll put them in our cars, we'll give them a run, and we'll let people know if they're any good. Bada bing. Because, um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of rotors now, you know, they're made in the same factories and stuff, so brands, non-brands, whatever you like, you know. Yeah, there's no grooves or anything. There's nothing there. Nothing to see here. Boring, boring. Between whatever and whatever, that's long enough. I'll go get these pads, see if we can get them in without making too much mess. Um, okay, what are we going to put? We'll put the outer first because the outer was a little bit difficult just before. So let's try and get that in without making too much mess, without making too much mess on me either. Scary, I tell you. Yucky red stuff that causes cancer. Whose idea with this? 
John? No, it wasn't really, because I was going to do it anyway, because I knew I had some there, and I don't like the stuff. And I thought, perfect opportunity on the one of the R&D vehicles. Isn't it good when you can talk to people, because you know they're going to be watching, and you know they're still going to be watching till the end. Certain people. It'd be good to be able to get to know who the other people are that watch all the videos till the end. So, as always, I do like seeing things in the comments where people are quite positive about maximum information and you know so if you're still with me with this one and pretty well generally always are just let me know shoot me a reply saying hey i'm with you till the end captain prado or something like that there you go captain prado i see all these comments and i go what was he writing that some silly thing i come up with during the video hey guys i just got to be totally honest here I don't even check the videos. I do this, I chuck it together, I don't do any further editing, I don't even proof watch it and make sure I didn't accidentally put a wrong bit of footage in there or whatever. It goes up and then when I'm ready, it goes public and I don't check it. So I rely on you guys to let me know if there's something in there that shouldn't be, please tell me. And then hopefully that gets me out of trouble because I said, oh, you know, something wrong and all i don't check it sorry it was definitely an accident because quite clearly if you check that brake pad squeal video i said that i don't check stuff so there's my evidence that it was all an accident i didn't realize i didn't mean to put that bit of footage in there i'll take as much care as i can but uh you know we make mistakes apparently so that stuff's been at least 10 minutes probably 15 on the inside i don't know that it makes much difference anyway because I'm pretty sure. See, it's wet as any. It's wet as the day it went on there. Maybe because it's old, it's not drying. There's a possibility. I'll give credit for that. No problem. Credit where credit's due. But I don't know. I haven't used. So maybe someone that uses this stuff a lot. Here you go. Got a call for the guys that use the dodgy brake pads with the dodgy <laughs> disc brake quiet. Does it normally dry pretty quick, or do you just put it back together wet? Question for you. Right. It's real, this is real easy to sit on, I'm just careful because I'm trying not to mush that red mushy beetroot juice, whatever it is, I don't know, is that what we're going to call it? The beetroot juice, the CRC beetroot juice. Oh, it won't go anywhere too far now, just get it through there clean without any dirt, is ideal. Oh, these pads, they're wearing down a little bit because there's quite, I've pushed the piston, I can fit a finger in there, so... I would say, we probably could have talked about that, when it's time to replace your brake pads, soon as we're looking at them. Um, I've shown you with wheels on cars, you can see from up in behind here, this way through the hole to the pad, the meat there. So I suppose we can talk about that for a bit, once I do these bolts up though, because we're not going to get distracted. Alright, we want to get these done up to, what did I say, 80 newton metres maybe. Or a good F tight. Who can tell me what F tight is? And by the way, don't swear in the comments. Even if they're good comments, I'm just going, oh, I want to put it up, but we want to just keep it free of swearing. You know, that's easy enough to do, isn't it? So come up with some creative words that are not swearing, okay? And that'd be cool. Because then we don't have to decline comments that um you know, sometimes good comments. And every now and then one slips through to the keeper, but I'm warning you now. You have been warned. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Please don't swear. Please don't swear in the comments because I want to put them up. And um, so you can see there's that much piston left. You can watch that while I go and pump it up again. That'll be a bit of excitement for you. And then I'll give you a few pointers. That maybe no one else has ever told you. Is it there yet? Is it there yet? Because I can't see what I'm doing, so I don't know. You meant to yell out. Yep, that's it. Well, keep going. You would have seen that piston come out, yeah? Right? Any room to move there? That's just the backing plate, but I'm just trying to see for myself 
it's just the backing plate moving a little bit so anyway that's what's meant to happen so that's all good and I'll give you a couple of pointers just give me a sec okay so pumping up the brakes first little tip there because you've pushed the piston back the brake pedal will go to the ground it's really important that if you do this you do pump up the brake before you drive the vehicle because when you go for the brakes as your brake pedal goes down that piston comes out but it won't go all the way necessarily in one stroke and that's you're not used to this and you've gone oh no and your foot's gone to the floor and next thing you know crunch or bang and it won't be a butter bing it'll be a butter boom right so you need to make sure whenever you work with brakes and push pistons back that you pump up the caliper or the piston on some brake systems anyway yes most of them it's different it gets technical so don't do it if you don't know what you're doing this is the rear of a proto it is one of the most simplest brake arrangements because the handbrake assembly is in the disc that's a separate issue this is just your disc brake now don't do it if you don't know what you're doing important part about pump pumping brake pedals if you push it all the way to the floor particularly on an older vehicle it's not used to that sort of travel and there can be some build-up of gunk and crap just small debris in the master cylinder and pushing that piston down past its normal travel by pushing that pedal to the floor could cause problems in your master in your master cylinder yeah so don't do that lots of short strokes don't go past the normal travel okay so there's your other little side tip don't go past the normal travel okay and same when you're bleeding brakes. If you happen to be bleeding brakes, pumping the pedal, pumping the pedal, pumping the pedal. Don't go past the normal travel, okay? There's different ways to control doing brake bleeds. Maybe that's another video. It's going to get pretty long. You can see how long this one's been just trying to fix a brake squeal. Maybe this is changing brake pads, right? Um, what was the other tip I was going to give you? Okay, don't forget to tighten those up. Short strokes um, for your master cylinder. I think there was something else so too many bits of information and tips and bang i lost it right so that could do with a bit more pump. but you can see it moves freely right the way it's meant to that's what's meant to happen so we're going to get on it i'm going to go around there and pump it a bit more you can watch it pump it pump it pump it up that a good pumping now over this side it's not moving and over this side it's not moving now either right so bada bing it's got enough pressure that if that's going to do its awesome little gluing business and if you have a look around here you can see right kind of like blowing bubbles out that's what i said doesn't matter you can throw it on liberally but it's just going to ooze out and make mess like that anyway but what's good about it when you go to clean it off you just grab it and it does come off pretty well it cleans up pretty well so i'm not complaining too much anyway guys what are we going to do now we're going to do a rotate our tires so we're going to get the other wheels and tires off whack them on this position here and put them where we want them left right inside outside back to front and we're not doing a tire rotation video here right now so for this video i reckon that's about it and i will come back to you in another video to let you know how it went so if you haven't already subscribe so you don't miss that part make sure you got the bell on so you know when it comes through and if you got something out of this which oh absolutely you, you must have don't forget to give us a thumbs up and as i said i'll be looking in the comments thanks for watching see you guys